Today we have a crazy entitled parent story all about trying to keep their kid from ever coming out. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, entitled aunt demands I take out my piercing. A few days ago, my family met at my great grandparents' house for a family Christmas celebration. My great aunt, grandma's sister, was there with her grandson, his wife, and their child. This particular aunt is always causing drama in the family. We'll call her R. My dad took me to get my septum pierced for my 18th birthday early in 2023, so I've had it pierced for a while. I've only had the plain silver horseshoe I got back when it was first pierced for a while, but I recently got a new horseshoe piercing decorated with a bee on one end and a honeycomb on the other. It stands out more than the other one, so I guess she finally noticed it during our celebration. I was sitting on the stairs with my brother, as always. R was sitting on the floor across from the stairs with her great-granddaughter S and two of my younger cousins. She stared at me for a while, which I assumed was because of my hair because she's never liked the fact that I shaved the sides and got an undercut. Instead, she asked me if I had my septum pierced. I said I did and she simply asked, why? Before I could even answer her, the answer would have been something along the lines of, because I wanted to. She goes, you know, they say that a woman gets her septum pierced so her husband can attach her to a leash and drag her around by it. She actually said that in front of the three younger girls in the room. My aunt and uncle, who were sitting on the couch off to my left, were shocked. Since none of us wanted to cause a scene, we kind of just laughed it off. I was a bit snappy and said, well, mine is a horseshoe, not a ring, so it doesn't matter. The topic was dropped for a while. Later, after we all ate lunch, R cornered me by the bathroom after I was washing my hands and demanded I take the piercing out because I was being a bad influence for poor S. S was too busy playing around in her new princess dress to notice anything anyone else was doing, so that was bull. I'm a very anxious person normally, but this bench of a lady has had something against me and my dad basically my entire life, so I was sick of her crap. I told her to back off and to stop judging me and my decisions when she screwed up her own marriage so much that her ex doesn't like being referred to as her ex because it connects him to her. She gave me so many nasty looks the rest of the afternoon, but I didn't care. I'm already planning on getting more nose piercings and her stupid ideals can't stop me. I mean, I don't know where they've been the last 30 years or so, but there's a lot of people that have septum piercings nowadays. Like, I feel like it's actually fairly common enough to see it. Enough to the point where her old wives' tales just make her look stupid. It's almost as bad as, like, earnestly still believing that if you step on a crack on the sidewalk, you break your mother's back. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys can't get enough of these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, my mother has pushed me too far and has ruined my New Year's Day. For a bit of background, my relationship with my mother is extremely complicated. Growing up, she did so many awful, cruel things to all of us, mentally for me, but both mentally and physically to my sister. Now that I'm older and after lots of therapy, I've realized she was the problem and it wasn't actually because I was the worst person to ever exist, as she made me feel. So fast forward to now as an adult with my own family, I'm doing much better. Husband I have a great relationship with and truly love, beautiful son, sweet puppy in our first house. I've had one of the toughest two years of my life though. After multiple miscarriages and a difficult pregnancy, I had my son and I also got my dream dog. Some people will get this and some won't, but my dog was my world. My solid through all of this difficulty and he died suddenly this summer. He wasn't even two when he died in my arms. If you've ever had to hold the dog you loved like your own child as he died in your arms, you'll understand the trauma it causes. After therapy and antidepressants, six months later, I was finally feeling happy again. Like I could smile and maybe there could be sun again. I've had a good few weeks. Today, I woke up to abusive messages from my mother. At just 1am last night, she had responded to a Happy New Year message I posted in our group. Sharing a picture of myself with friends, clearly showing us in company, she told me to have a lovely night and looked great. Then something changed. Between 2 to 3 a.m., she sent me a load of abusive messages, saying how she was done with me, how awful I was, and how she's devastated I didn't call her for New Year's. This was out of nowhere. I've been so good to her despite the history, but this Christmas, I didn't spend it with them. I wanted to spend it with my own family and told them well in advance. They agreed it was a lovely idea and said they were happy for me. Clearly not. 
Now, my whole New Year's Day was spent so furious about this. I want to leave the family group. I want to cut ties because I can't do this anymore. She's so awful and then guilts me into feeling like it's all my fault. I genuinely feel like I hate her, but I live in a small country where people don't really just cut ties with their mother without there being a very public and well-supported reason. I want to set boundaries, but then I don't want to be the reason my son doesn't see his grandparents. I also love my extended family, and they won't want the drama. I don't know what to do. Honestly, if I were in OP's position and I was pushed to my limit, I think I'd rather enforce those boundaries and just tune out anybody else that doesn't matter to you in your life that wants to try to give you any kind of grief for doing so. I mean, shoot, anybody that tries to give you grief for cutting off somebody that is just a cancer in your life, well, they're just trying to be extra nodules on that cancer. Our next story is, my daughter's father wants to use her as therapy for his wife. I, 33-year-old female, going to preface this by saying my 6-year-old daughter's father, 37-year-old male, I'm going to call him Jeff, has never been my romantic partner. We had a one-night stand. I don't like people calling him my ex, since it makes it seem like we had some kind of emotional attachment. He was never involved after I told him I was pregnant and actually wanted me to terminate the pregnancy. But I decided to raise my child alone since I have enough money to raise her without child support. For the whole pregnancy in the first four years, Jeff was not in the picture. On my mother's recommendation, I did send him pictures and invited him to special events, but he always replied he had no interest in my daughter. Two years ago, he reappeared and began demanding parental rights. When I didn't do what he wanted, he sued and was told no, he was not getting parental rights. He was given the offer to pay child support and then we can revisit giving him actual rights, but he has refused. He has the money, much more than me, but he refuses. I still offer to let him see my daughter in a casual manner, no child support needed, with the agreement that anything legal, medical, or educational will not involve him. He pushed the boundaries, and we had a fallout. After that, we didn't hear from him for almost six weeks before he called the meet for Christmas. After much discussion, I agreed to bring my daughter over on the condition my daughter's godparents could come. Thus, we went over for Christmas dinner, and finding out Jeff is married and had never told his family he had a child, it was great to be judged by a bunch of strangers. It was uncomfortable the whole time. I'm going to use fake names, but let's say my daughter's name is Katie. His wife kept calling my daughter Gabrielle, not the actual name she used, but it was that different to my daughter's name. The wife was also very physical, trying to pick up my daughter or parent her. I would block her or tell her to please let me deal with my child. The whole time she pretty much ignored me, but Katie didn't seem nervous so I decided to just bid my time. I hit my limit when my daughter said she needed the bathroom and this stranger went, oh Gabby you need potty, let mommy change you. My daughter hasn't worn diapers in a while now and she's more than capable of going alone to the bathroom. I immediately told her to stay away from my daughter and that we were leaving. The woman started wailing that I was kidnapping her baby girl and tried to lunge at me. Her in-laws got in the middle and held her, consoling her and saying that we weren't leaving and for her to calm down like she was the victim. At that point I just glared at Jeff and told him he better explain or I would be calling the police. He asked me to speak in private in another room and that I could just leave my daughter with his parents. No way that would ever happen. Katie's godparents took her with them, despite the wife having a full meltdown. Jeff and I spoke outside, and he explained that he and his wife recently lost a daughter. I'm not going to give specific details on that, all I'll say is it was sudden and nobody's fault. As I can only imagine, it had caused some psychological issues to his wife. Apparently he had the brilliant idea that having Katie pass as their lost child would help his wife, without telling me. And that's why he wanted visitations and parental rights. He pleaded for me to leave my daughter with him for a little bit. I asked him what was his plan when his wife heals. His response was disgusting. Well, I'll just send Katie back with you and it'll be just like before. I told him he was insane if he thought I would let him use my daughter like that. What his wife needs is therapy with a professional, not feeding her delusions. And I would not let that woman within miles for my daughter. He told me I was being cruel and didn't know the pain of losing a child. 
I agreed with him, but reminded Jeff that my priority is not his family, it's my child. What he and his family do to work through their grief has nothing to do with us. I also told him to call his lawyer because I'm making sure he never has contact with my child. So that's what I'm bracing for. He's been blasting my phone since Christmas, but I can easily ignore him. My daughter and I are doing a small travel vacation. Definitely not a safe space for your kid. And huge alarm bells ringing the whole way around. It's one of those kind of like eye-opening, almost horror-like feelings finding out the truth here. It's like they're trying to feed off of you and your living situation and her being a kid to try to incredibly unhealthily fill that void. Our next story is, my mom has a toxic relationship with an emotionally abusive partner and expects me to put up with it. I'm a 24 year old man who lives on the same street as my mom. I have my own house, but generally maintain a strong relationship with her. However, growing up was not a smooth ride. We were always on welfare, my parents never worked, my uncle is a crack addict, my mom is an alcoholic, drinks less now but still struggles to refrain from having one can a day. My dad died when I was 15, but he was barely involved anyway, and as much as my mom provided for me and my two brothers growing up, she neglected us all emotionally, never being able to show depth in conversation, and worst of all, talking back to her boyfriend who has mentally abused her over 13 years and even hit her more than once. Recently, they broke up again, and like the idiot I am, I decided to invest in supporting her through it again in hopes that she could finally be free from his torment. Lo and behold, last night, she told me she's taking him back after a month, longest it's ever been of having him out of the house. My mom is diagnosed with bipolar disorder and cares for my younger brother who's 16 and severely autistic. He's functional, no physical disabilities, but communicates in his own speech, and is very simplified in his thinking, etc. She will gaslight me when I tell her I don't want to be around because of the boyfriend, claiming it's not fair on my brother and can't understand the importance of me wanting to protect my energy. I respect her in making her own decisions, but very, very rarely do I feel the same about her when it comes to my own decisions. To add to this, my mom also treats her own mom, my nana slash grandma, very badly. My nana has severe depression and OCD, however my mom will shout at her for fiddling around with things and being spaced out even though she can't help it due to her disorders. This hurts me a lot as my nana is the most gentle and generous soul and is always giving out her money to the family when in need, even funding my previously mentioned uncle's crack addiction. But he and my mom treat her like crap and always throw a tantrum when they don't get what they want, money, out of her. Edit, as I'm writing this, my mom texted me she was drunk last night and hasn't actually taken her boyfriend back. I don't know what to do. On one hand, I care so much for her. On the other, her entitlement and lack of depth is painful for me and drains my energy. My own life has been a crap storm since 2019 where I lost my job and went into a deep rock bottom depression. I will be seeking therapy this week as the next step since it's slowly getting better, but this situation with my mom is confusing. I'm not sure there's anybody else to look out for in this position for OP but OP. Overall, in a situation like this, they've got to look out for themselves first and foremost. Our next story is planning to move out even if my parents won't let me. I, 16-year-old female, live in a Muslim household and my dream is to live an independent life one day and to be able to do what I want freely. Of course, I understand that at my age, it's normal for parents to decide for their child since I'm still a teenager. I have no problem with having strict parents. What I do have a problem with, however, is the reasons behind why they are so strict in the first place. In their culture, women aren't allowed to do much and are expected to not only get a higher education and a great career, but to also cook, clean, get married, bear children and raise them, etc. They have controlled my whole life and made it heck for me because of my gender, and didn't do the same to my brother at all for the same reason. They speak of my future as if it's predetermined by them. When you get married to an Algerian Muslim man and have children, you'll truly be happy. I don't know if I'll ever want to do that, and I know that for them, I don't really have a choice for my own life. The biggest problem, however, is they don't want me to move out until I get married. Once again, I'm young and I don't know if I'd want to get married in the first place. I'm not even Muslim, but they don't know that or else I'd be in big trouble. 
I want to finally live freely and not worry about them anymore. Stressing over everything, not being able to have plans since they're so strict, etc. I'd love to be able to move out once I'm 18, but for them, my age wouldn't change a single thing. And the possibility of me moving out alone without being married is just not existent to them. My plan is to move out at 18 without telling them in advance and potentially to never talk to them from then on. I already have a job. I could get another job very easily where I live. I have friends that know about my situation and who welcome me to live with them if I did decide to do this. I'm so thankful to have those people in my life. And I'm planning to save all my money to pay for my studies. My parents already wanted to pay for all of my studies, but if I end up moving out, I don't think they'll be paying for anything anymore. And that's perfectly fine for me. I lived through enough abuse and physical and psychological violence to think that it's a worthy sacrifice. I don't think I'm the greatest person or the best daughter, but at least I deserve to live a life that I want to live, even if it would make them unhappy. I'm just worried I won't be able to do it because I'd feel too bad or I wouldn't be able to handle their disappointment. I welcome any advice, questions, comments, or any opinions regarding my situation, since I honestly need outsiders' points of view. Thanks. Well, I think this is a situation, culture or not, that you either comply to it or you do fight against it and try to live the life you want to live. I mean, if you just give up and accept your predetermined outcome that you're being forced into, I mean, so be it, but I mean, it all comes down to what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. Our next story is, is this covert incest? I already hate my mother for the abuse I've been forced to put up with over the years. In an odd way, my mother looks up to me for advice on her dating life. I always feel uncomfortable when she puts me in this position and even asked her, don't you have people your age to talk about this with? She brushed it off and carried on. Last year, she started bringing some random dude over to hook up with so loud that I had to leave the house in order to not hear it. The next morning, she'd complained to me about him, apologizing for forcing me to hear them hooking up and promised it would never happen again. The same day, they were back at it like nothing happened. They ended up breaking up and again, my mom gave an elaborated half-hearted apology saying she never wants me to feel disrespected again and that she doesn't want to jeopardize our relationship like that again. Just days later, she ended up doing the same thing with another man, and when I confronted her about it, she unempathetically said, This is my house, I do what I want. Honestly, this crap feels intentional. It seems like some freaked up mind game that she's playing with me. Like, why feign empathy just to revert back just days later? She has to know exactly what she's doing. There is no way that she could lie her way out of this one. I'd like to believe that they want to do better, but they're just kind of of the human nature to keep making the same mistakes. Needless to say, it's pretty disturbing behavior to display in front of OP like that. It's definitely not cool for OP to have to experience and sit through that, especially if OP's not of adult age. Our next story is, Entitled and homophobic parents demand I never come out to my grandma. I'm a 31-year-old female, and when I was 19, I realized I was queer as freak. Neither of my parents took it well. When I told my mom, she very bluntly said, So what? So what as I grew up in a very homophobic home, and this was a big step for me? A few years later, I was outed to my dad, and he told me that while he loved me, he'd never accept that part of me, and if I married a woman, he wouldn't come to the wedding. They've since made steps to get better, but it's like going from a 20% grade to a 40% grade. That's a lot of progress, but it's still a failing grade. To give you a further idea, anytime I ask my mom not to say something homophobic, she goes... Well, you know, OP, some of your father and my closest friends are gay, and I don't appreciate you attacking me. To which I say, Mom, you did not just use the I have gay friends argument, did you? All this while, they've both told me for years to never come out to my grandma. She's from a different time. It'll destroy your relationship with her. She'll gossip to the whole family and you'll be ostracized. And for the most part, I was inclined to agree with them. I don't know much about my grandma's politics, she's very private about it, but based on the news she watches and what my dad believes, I can guess it's pretty far from my beliefs. I am extremely close with her though, and so the thought of underlying bigotry coming out and spoiling our relationship was terrifying to me. However, for the rest of the family, I honestly don't talk to most of them, so I couldn't care less what they say or think of me. But after years of this, it got so exhausting. 
I've been gradually shifting to be more masculine. I was a pretty tomboyish kid until I felt pressure to lean towards femininity so it feels like I'm being more myself. I've cut my hair and started wearing men's clothes, and after I did, my grandma started making comments of how I used to have such long, pretty hair and gorgeous dresses. This was on top of my parents immediately assuming I was trans when I cut my hair, and my mom telling me her greatest fear was the possibility of me telling her I felt like a boy. So it kinda cut deep. Over a decade of this wore me down further and further until the facade was paper thin and it was just a don't ask, don't tell situation. And all this time my parents keep reminding me, you can never tell grandma. Well it finally got to be enough. I couldn't take the thought of it anymore. After long conversations with my siblings and therapists and friends, I decided to write a letter explaining how I felt. I worked very hard to keep it kind, to give the benefit of the doubt, because I'm close to her and I love her and even though I highly doubted it would work out, I figured I should at least open the door. A few days after I sent it, she called to tell me she'd read it. I was silent for a few moments before she said, OP, love is not conditional. You can tell me anything in the world and I'll always love you no matter what. This changes nothing. I was absolutely stunned. For years, I was convinced that doing this would destroy our relationship, that being honest would only bring pain. I believed my parents when they told me she couldn't possibly understand. But then she turned around and gave me what they never did. Typing it out right now has me tearing up, and I remember crying over the phone with her as she continued to assure me how much she loved me. I also asked if she could keep it between us, to which she exclaimed, of course. This is no one else's business. Our relationship has been stronger than ever since then. But behind all that are the entitled parents. I'd mentioned to grandma that my parents told me she wouldn't understand. And that shocked her and hurt her feelings. And the more I go back and think about everything they said to me about it, the more I realize that they were just projecting their own feelings onto grandma to make themselves look better by comparison. They're from a time where they could have known better, and they didn't. They said being honest with grandma would affect our relationship, because it has with mine and my parents. They said she'd gossip and it would ostracize me, when really, they were worried about being gossiped about themselves, being the family with the gay kid, having to answer questions and, God forbid, stand up for me. But more than that, I know they gossip about me too. One of my siblings told me they had to shut them down because they said, I just don't get why she keeps getting so upset about this gay thing. Why can't she just keep it to herself? As if saying anything more than a safer work joke doesn't make the blue screen of death pass over my dad's eyes for 10 minutes. I haven't told them I came out to her. It's been a few months now, and I'm still considering how I want to approach it. But not only did they spend the last 12 years disparaging my grandmother, they denied me the love she could have given me in that time. The love I should have received from them. I don't know if it will solve anything to confront them about it, but it infuriates me every time I think about it. This is also only one unfortunate aspect about a much more complicated people. I love my parents. They're not as bad as you might think from just these descriptions. They have many good qualities and spread a lot of good to the people around them. I want to keep them in my life. Human beings aren't black and white. You know, we're all shades of gray. It's just that sometimes you gotta vent about the crappy parts. Well, the bottom line here is the ball is in OP's court. You could bring it up to them and almost kind of smear it in their face, explain that everything was so opposite of what they described, and call them out on them being worried about just how they would appear. Or you could keep it mostly under wraps and just have that supportive grandparent not have any extra drama, maybe. Or just let it go on and maybe they'll find out eventually, who knows. Our next story is, I don't want to mend things with my dad. My 25-year-old female, dad, 49, used to be an alcoholic. He's recovered now and used to do and say some pretty freaked up crap back in the day to my mom. They had a really toxic relationship, but they're divorced now. Not to me or my sister, but he didn't seem to care how all of this would affect us. I grew up in a cold house where you constantly had to walk on eggshells not to upset him. It gave me really bad anxiety and other problems in my adulthood. So I distanced myself from him. Now my dad has a new girlfriend and he lives with her. She seems like a decent woman, but she's very pushy. She keeps on guilt tripping me into forgiving him because he's sober now and look, 
He's trying so hard. My problem with this is that although I'm really glad he's sober and happy now, I hope it stays that way. His sudden change of character never came from his fatherly instinct to not hurt his children. It had to be a strange woman to come and tell him that his ways were wrong, and only then he listened. Honestly, I can't get past that. So I cut contact with him entirely a few days ago. And what do you know? Now I'm getting long blocks of text from his girlfriend with all that guilt tripping again. Because he's such a good man who needs warmth too and maybe you should try harder too. You have got to be freaking kidding me. He's your father. Well, I was his daughter and what did he do about that? She called me selfish and spoiled. My last straw was when he chose to spend Christmas with his new family, his girlfriend and her daughter, yet again. I have to be honest, when I cut contact with him a few days ago because of that, I was really harsh. Maybe a bit too harsh. I told him and her what I think about them, and some pretty terrible words were used. Not to mention that he was hiding his girlfriend for a long time before I found out about her myself. I understand, sometimes you don't introduce your dates to your children, because you're not sure of them. But when I found out about her, he was already building a house for them. What the freak was all that about? I still don't understand why he would keep her such a secret. My sister knew. She didn't tell me, but honestly, I understand her. She's young, 18, and probably felt like she was between a rock and a hard place. So, my scars run deep. Am I in the wrong? OP is definitely not in the wrong, and they grew up with a childhood full of trauma and abusive behavior from this guy. So for him to have a girlfriend and she only sees the nice things he's presenting to her for now, probably going to see the not so great behaviors later when they get a little too comfortable, for her to turn around and start berating OP and saying, well, maybe you should try harder too. Sorry that OP didn't try any harder when they were an innocent child and had no concept of anything. Our next story is, my parents don't want me living with my fiancé's family because we aren't married yet. Me, female 20, and my fiancé, male 19, have been dating for two years since September 2021. Just recently this month, he proposed and I said yes. My family are Mormons. I would consider myself an ex-Mormon. I live with my parents still, and they charge me $500 a month for rent. If I need a ride to work in the morning, that's $10, and so on and so forth, with charges adding on where they see fit. My fiancé and his family have offered that I live with them, since he gives me rides to work. I'm almost always with him, whether it's at his house or mine, but because of my parents, I'm not allowed to sleep over, stay late, or live there, since we aren't married. Recently, due to issues with my family and me, I've seriously considered moving out and moving in with my fiancé. I wouldn't pay rent except for maybe $40 a month for my dog, which I have no problem with, and it's a huge step up from $500. My dog would have a fully fenced large backyard to play and get her daily exercise while I'm at work all day, 10 hour shifts, and I'd be in a better mental state, though I'm having some things keeping me from doing so. I don't know what would happen if my parents decided to take me off the insurance, if they didn't want to speak to me if I left, or just not attend the wedding, that they'd even say they'd pay for a lot of it. Is there any encouragement or advice you guys can give me on this? I can clarify if there's confusion, but... I don't think the potential promise of paying for things later outweighs controlling what you do now. If you want to move out and start living your own life, it's probably for the best that you do so. I mean, you can get a promise for just about anything, but is it going to necessarily always happen? And surely OP can find other insurance for less than $460 a month, especially if they're not a very high income earner. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.